Hello and welcome to the big picture. We are in Bangalore today as the elections to the Karnataka Assembly is on. The heat is picking up just now. In, a, in, in for 28, 24 hours, you will see the last list of the final list of candidates will be ready. The campaign is just on. The leaders have started leaving for different constituencies in the in the state to go and campaign. As the as the election picks up, the heat picks up. We will here today discuss what are the kinds of issues and what are the concerns which people of Karnataka have. What are the kind of issues which will come up in the in the campaign during this election, and how the various political parties will tackle them. To discuss this, I have with me Professor Rajiv Gowda, a leader of the Congress Party, Professor Trilochan Shastri of Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore, and also an election analyst, Ramkrishna Upadhyaya, who is a senior editor of the Deccan Herald. Welcome to all of you, Professor Rajiv Gowda. First, coming to you. This is an election, this is a very interesting election because this is the first time in all these years that no political party will be able to claim that, you know, you have, you have tried everyone, please try us. Well, the Congress will be able to argue that you've tr given them all a chance and you've seen extraordinary instability. And if you look at the history of Congress governments in Karnataka, they've pretty much lasted their term. They've pretty much given you all kinds of interesting reforms like land reforms and other such measures. The boost to Bangalore City, all these kinds of um, uh, you know, initiatives have been from the Congress governments. And so uh, I think the Congress would argue that you may have tried everyone, but the best record is with the Congress, and so please give the Congress a majority and allow a stable government to get Karnataka out of the dark, you know, nightmare that it has been living in in the last five years. So, okay, I mean, if you if you think that the people are going to buy that argument, what are what is it that you are going to place before the people of Karnataka that you will do something new, which which the previous government has not done? What are, the, what, what are the major issues as far as the co Congress is concerned in the election? Apart from saying that you have tried all, now come back to us. Well, Congress is about to release its manifesto, which covers a range of topics, addresses every section of society. Um, some of the key issues that I have uh, played a role in contributing to are focused on youth and you know, encouraging entrepreneurship, encouraging skill development. We have a very, very young population in Karnataka and one of the key agendas is to actually reach out to them, empower them and unleash their potential so that we can see development and empowerment go hand in hand and we will see growth that uh, sustains into the future. There are uh, agendas for farmers, there are agendas for minorities, there are agendas for women and women's safety. I mean, you name it, we've got uh, agendas out there. And um, I think there is a lot of fresh thinking. We've been in the opposition for a few years. We've had a chance <laughs> to actually uh, reflect on what's going wrong and what we should actually uh, come in with to capture the imagination and more importantly, deliver in terms of good governance. So that's okay. really what okay. we are up Pro to. Professor Shastri, you know, these are, every political party will paint a very rosy picture of what they're going to offer. But look, slightly, let's look, look back a little. In these last five years or so, that what, are, what is it that has been the biggest concern for people of Karnataka? See, I wouldn't want to uh, put any particular political party in the dock because we don't belong to any political party. But whether it's the last five years or even before that, I think uh, governance is an issue that people are very much concerned about and that includes all the gamut of issues that Rajiv mentioned, you know, whether it is in Bangalore, the roads, the water, the electricity, the drainage, the garbage disposal and I wouldn't uh, lay the blame on any particular government but we have seen a steady deterioration and even in the rural areas, for example, Karnataka has the worst drought uh, this year uh, for several decades. And we don't hear any action being taken by the administration to address that. Uh, Karnataka also has some of the highest uh, number of uh, farmer suicides. Right. So all these problems of governance is something that is a matter of concern for everybody. Okay. And by the way, we are now joined by Mr. Dhananjay Kumar. Dhananjay Kumar uh, is the working president of the Karnataka Janta Party, the new party which has been, uh, uh, which has come up 
under the leadership of Mr. Edurapa. Welcome to the show, Mr. Dhanajay Kumar. Mr. Dhanajay Kumar, uh, before you came, you know, we were talking, I was, I was asking uh, uh, Rajiv Gowda, right. you know, that this is the first election right. in a long, in, in ever since Karnataka or even the old Mysore was there, right. that no political party will be able to claim, you have tried everybody, now try us. Even your party will not be able to, uh, you know, have that slogan. So what is it that you people are going to offer? You know, the leader of your party has been a chief minister. He has had a, he has had a certain dubious record also of having gone to jail and all. So now what is it that your party can offer? Uh, Girish, uh, I think all of my colleagues would agree with me. These days, because uh, the electioneering, that is the campaign period is crunched only to 10 to 12 days. Yes. Uh, the, what, what would be working in the mind of the voter is, who would be the next chief minister? Right. The, this, uh, this, uh, if I can uh, say, would be a leader-based election. Okay. As we see, I can quote the example of uh, Gujarat. And Gujarat, uh, you know, in spite of all adverse media, um, uh, what, you, what should I say, media publicity or uh, media predictions, still people voted for the fourth time Mr. Narendra Modi. Right. Because Narendra Modi was the uh, center point of, uh, I mean, discussion. Right. So, I feel in Karnataka also, the electors will keep this in mind. And I can definitely make a claim. I think my friend Mr. Gowda also would agree with me. Today in Karnataka, across the political spectrum, Mr. Edivarappa is the only acclaimed leader who can lead the state and he has the past track record also you know when he was the chief minister he uh, uh, developed the state uh, took it to the uh, level of uh, uh, second position uh, in the whole of the country when you compare with the uh, so far as the developmental activity is concerned uh, in in, in uh, some of the sections uh, in fact uh, we excelled. We were uh, first uh, outbeating even Gujarat. Okay. So that being the situation, probably uh, people will have this in mind. The other point I will uh, conclude, other point which you made that uh, nobody has uh, uh, anything uh, new, to new to offer. I am a new party. I am not, not a new a party but not a new face. And like, people have tried is, you. People have not. already tried you. The leader people have already not. tried your leader. Leader is not, but uh, many of our candidates are, are new. new faces. Okay. So we don't Raji, have that anti incumbent Raji, I want you to quickly to react rebut. to what I'm he said. I'm forced to rebut because yes. he thought I was <laughs> going to agree that Mr. Yadinopa is acclaimed. He is acclaimed as the leader of corruption, he has <laughs> taken Karnataka to number one in the ranks of most corrupt states. So I'll stop there. Okay. Mm. Uh, uh, Ra Ra Ramakrishna Upadhyay coming to you. You know, he says that despite the record which he has, he is the only leader who is acclaimed. And another interesting point which Dhananjay Kumar makes is, this is an this is the election of leadership. Is it, a, is it a leader based election? I don't think so. Uh, I have to completely disagree with uh, what uh, Mr. Dhananjay Kumar said, because I think we had the worst government that Karnataka has seen in decades. The last five years it has been the most disastrous governments that we had, not just one, there were three BJP governments. So all of them have been a total failure and in terms of I think the main issue will be that of governance and we haven't had a government which is you know capable of governing the state. So that will be the main issue and people are not going to look at who is going to be the leader. They are not looking at who is the leader, who is going to be the next chief minister. They want a good government. I think, let, let, me, let me finish. Let, let I think finish. They, want, they want to see a good government, a stable government that will deliver on promises. I think we had a you know BJP government which came with a lot of euphoria. People thought that uh, you know we have given a lot of hopes. They thought you know we are the new party. We are trying out for the first time. You know they gave them a very good majority, 110, and which is almost close to the you know majority. And they just needed three. And you know with independence they could have very well given a good government. And I'm sure if Mr. Edurapa had given a good government, he would have continued, and he would have been the number one you know uh, leader today, and he would have probably had another term. But we have a situation now where he had to be, I mean, walk out of his party, which made him the chief minister. We gave him all the, uh, you know, powers. And then, you know, uh, on corruption issue, he had to uh, go out and then form a new party. So what is happening is now the BJP itself is split and they're, you know, sp splitting the voters. 
probably Congress being out of power for the last uh, two terms, they'll realize that, you know, they need to really deliver if they, you know, want to really come back to power and then, you know, pe for people to accept them. Okay. Um, Mr. Trilogen Chatri, yeah, Professor Chatri, the, the issue is that, you know, uh, Upadhyaya says that this has been the worst government and, you know, you also mentioned about the, the lack of governance and things like that. Governance is certainly a major issue. Do you see any other issue which the people are really concerned about and do you think the political parties are aware of this issue are reacting to that do you think they are they are, they are aware of what they need to give to the people see there are mixed signals you know we did some surveys and uh, while uh, both our friends here have uh, referred to corruption and personally i am also very much concerned about corruption it remains to be seen whether corruption is really an election issue or not we do not know because to some section of the voters it is and to some other section of the voters it is not. The other issue that I see is that, uh, uh, you know, there is uh, too, man, too many political parties in the fray right. and uh, the game is going to be uh, played not in terms of uh, which is the better party but if you can undercut this person and undercut that person and take 5% seats away, uh, votes from here and there. So, what kind of a picture will emerge uh, remains to be seen. Right. And uh, I don't think the ordinary voter is really concerned about political stability or uh, the who is going to be the leader. You know, I can see the lights of the uh, Chinnaswamy uh, Stadium here. The IPL match is probably going on. So, this is not an IPL match about who is going to win. Yes. The real issue is, are the voters going to win? Right. Are the voters going to get good governance? And I think voters are a little confused and a little uh, worried about uh, what is going to happen. I think this is an issue. Okay, on, on that note, I think we'll, we'll take a sh short break. It's a very interesting observation. Are the voters going to win? This is a very imp significant issue. It's an important issue. We will discuss how this, this can happen in these elections. We'll go, we'll go into a short break now. Please keep watching. We'll come back very soon. We are in Bangalore for a special edition of the big, big Picture and discussing the elections in Karnataka and looking at all the issues and concerns which are going to come up in these elections. Uh, Professor, uh, Professor Rajiv Goda, uh, you know, he made a very interesting observation whether people are going to win. Who is going to win is not the issue, people are going to win. One, that is, that, you know, is, is, is that on the minds of the political parties? Because, you know, we see what is happening is we are told that this is an election which Dhananjay Kumar said that you know it's a leader based election there also some people feel that this is a this is one of the those elections where caste will going to play a major role because all the potential aspirants as for the chief ministerships are trying to pull in their own community as much as possible to back them is this a caste based election or something which we have never seen before uh, no i think castes are quite splintered uh, the Lingayat community, you know, may have united under Yadiyurappa in the last election, but this time they have a choice of Yadiyurappa and Shetar and enough Shamanur in the Congress. So there is no real shortage of leaders who can attract the community. That is splintered. There are as many, if not more, Vakligas supporting the Congress as there are who uh, support uh, Devagoda and Kumar Swami. So caste at that level doesn't make it. That I don't think it's a caste-based election. Um, there, there are as many, um, you know, Ishwarappa is a Kuruba leader, you know, but uh, Yadu, uh, Sidramaya is a backward class leader. So, you know, he there are Dalit the leaders. So there are so many different uh, caste combinations and leaders there that I don't think caste will make a difference. I think what voters are going to look for is exactly what Professor Shastri mentioned. When in history have voters benefited? And so they will go back to Devarajars and the Congress regime where the poorest of the poor got land reforms Tenants got right to their land, and we saw that, that kind of transformation. They will go back to SM Krishna's Congress regime, both long-lived, stable regimes, where under SM Krishna you saw urban development, you saw entrepreneurship, you saw Bangalore being put on the global map. So people's memories are going to go in that direction and say, these are the times when the voters won, when the people won, when there was you know, distribution and inclusion and unleashing of growth. And I think that's what's going to figure in their memories. And that's why they're going to support the Congress once again this time. Mr. Dhananjay Kumar, memories. The memories left the memory, by your the memories, memories left by a leader is I mean what however much you may try to you know point out that right, there are right. some good memories but mostly there have been quite pretty bad memories. Right. Uh, a little while ago we were talking about corruption being the main issue. Yes. If really is it, is, it, is, is corruption going to Rajiv, I want to come back to you on if, that. Also. If really that is so, 
what to say about Congress party. It is founder of corruption, I say. So you G, think corruption is not an issue? 2G, the CWG, fine. Uh, G, the CWG coal. Are not issues in Karnataka. Why not? Yes, Why not? Uh, Karnataka is also is equally bothered. BJP, uh, no, no. Let, let, him, let, him, let him finish. Please. Upadhyaya, please. Karnataka is not out of India. It is part of India. So Congress uh, represents the true uh, corrupt uh, party. Fine. Anyway, that no, a part. Fine, we'll accept. That a part. So are you trying to say that corruption is not, an, is not going to be an issue in this election? It may not be that much. This okay. is my point. Then uh, Upadhyaya has been So claiming. that is why, that is Please. why, is that why you say that your leader stands a chance in this election? 100%. And then uh, Upadhyaya was uh, talking about... Uh, you know, uh, non-performance of the governments. Yes. Now, you, he forgets uh, conveniently that during Edurappa's regime, in three years' time, when Edurappa took over as chief minister, the state's uh, total economy, the budget was hardly 32,000 crores. When he left office, he raised it to 1,10,000 crores. You see, without imposing any new taxes, when you can augment the revenues, naturally, that will be the plank on which you can achieve development. So how can you achieve the development from where the money comes? The government of India, as you know, has always a stepmotherly attitude towards Karnataka. May it be the right to water, Kaveri, they have killed Karnataka. Then uh, electricity, no coal is being uh, uh, allotted, no coal block, no coal linkage. In spite of that, I must tell, I must remind Upadhyaya and all others, that during Edurappa's regime in three years, we take pride in saying that we could add on 3,000 megawatts more power to the grid. Never during the 10 years regime of Congress. Okay. Never during the uh, five years uh, regime of uh, Janata Dal. 3,000 megawatts. From where? Which project? I I, I, will, I will I will tell you I will no, tell I, you. Okay, I, I, we, we will we will wait. Udupi was I there much earlier. Mr. Not no, your sir. Mr. No, Dalanjay, sir. Mr. Kumar. Only during uh, no, Mr. Dalanjay Kumar. I, I think you. I know. Let's let's hope that you will be able to convince the people of Karnataka the, about all these things. The Bellari, okay. Bellari third will, unit, the Raichur fourth unit, Udupi, we, all put together it was three thousand megawatts. Okay. It is on record. I am not trying to. Okay. Uh, Rajiv. Put anything. Rajiv, two things. One one is about you know what he is saying, but the more important issue what uh, Professor Shastri raised before the break is about whether corruption is an issue at all in the minds of the people. I want uh, Upadhyay also to uh, 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 you know, react to that, but I want you first. I think corruption is going to be an issue. And the nice thing that uh, the voters have seen is that those who have been accused of corruption have been, uh, you know, we have had a very prominent and aggressive Lokayukta who has put a lot of uh, weight behind the anti-corruption campaign. So many of the leading corrupt uh, figures starting from uh, Mr. Yadiyurappa, have ended up uh, facing time in jail. Um, you know, the Reddy brothers, when he mentioned Balari, that's what we remember, right, who have usurped uh, the natural resources of Karnataka and put it in their own pockets. They are also cooling their uh, heels in jail. So, in some ways, the people are heaving a sigh of relief. Oh, no, what about um, the lads? Uh, Anil lads. We're, we're heaving a sigh of relief that those who are corrupt are being targeted that the system is finally working. Uh, Mr. Kata Naidu's uh, uh, property and assets have been seized. You know, so all these sorts of uh, developments have taken place. So the people are hoping that the system will work and the corrupt will, you know, not just be in jail, but will also not get a chance in these elections. Now, I Upadhyaya, you know, okay, I mean, I, so either, you, you react to him, but you know, I also, also, also want you to look at the larger picture of you know, the, the, the people themselves, we have seen the kind of money power which has been used in the last election. I want to come to the issue of money power, but you, you can first take on. No, I think uh, uh, I agree with him to the extent that corruption is an issue and people are going to look at it. But then look at what Congress has done. They have also put up Anil Lard, they put up uh, Anand Singh. I mean, these are all people who have been indicted in the uh, Lokayukta report. And then you have Muniratna. I mean, the famous man in Bangalore city who, you know, who killed an you know, 18-year-old girl and didn't pay a paisa of compensation. He's a candidate for your party. He, he, was, a, he, he, was, a, he was a contractor. He was a contractor, Bangalore city contractor, you know, who built a wall which you know, just collapsed, collapsed on this girl who was just walking by. And, you know, the, and this government has done nothing to compensate that uh, lady. And you know, when it comes to these kind of issues, all political parties are the same. But people are going to look at, you know, at the, at the micro level as to who is good, who is better among the, you know, the three or four candidates that, I mean, they have very little choice. I mean, you know, that's, so they have to look at, 
at the mi micro level who is the better of the uh, lot and then they will have to vote for him. Professor Shastri, money power, and I, I'm sure you, the the organization with which you, you with, which, which, which you work, the election watch, has been looking at the issues of issue of the how the, uh, the money power is being used during the election and all, once they get elected, how they how they accumulate it also. Is money power an issue in these elections? See, uh, we have to understand it carefully. In the short run, we may say it doesn't matter. Everybody is bribing voters. Everybody is spending, overspending, and voters choose whom they like. Yes. But this high stakes game of spending so much money in elections, whichever party it is, is guaranteed to lead to bad governance. Right. Because if a person has spent crores of rupees to win an election, that person is going to focus on recovering that money, making sure that he has enough money for the next election and so on. And that's why we have potholes and garbage and so many things. So I think we need to find a way where, you know, all our friends, I don't want to only take uh, partiality to Rajiv, but, you know, educated, uh, honest people have a chance of entering politics and winning elections. Because the stakes are just, uh, it's stacked too much against uh, honest people getting into politics today. But is there a chance for them to get into politics? Because, you know, political parties don't select this kind of people. They all, they all go by the, you know, the old, uh, you know, formula, the moneyed people. You have people with 300 crores, 400 crores, 500 crores. Yes, yes. People are, you know, shameless now. Earlier they used to, they used to, you know, hide their wealth. But they are now they're they're now, come now, out. Now flaunting and, wealth is, yeah. is a sure way of getting a ticket. Yeah. Rajiv? Yes. Apparently there are a lot of very wealthy candidates these days. Yes. Yeah, so that is some, uh, but as long Every as political party, in every political party. Yeah, yeah what is, uh, it has become a criterion, you know, right. if a person has a lot of wealth to spare, and often illegal wealth, that is seen as the capacity to be a good candidate. So what we need are system changes. We need electoral yeah. reforms, we need possibly state funding, we need elimination of these uh, irrational expenditure limits. We need to, uh, you know, uh, uh, bring, uh, we need to accept that democracy costs money and somehow that money should be open transparent clean and legal if that's the case then we will find that parties don't have to turn uh, to you know money bags yes, yes. of all kinds yes, of dubious sorts see this money is required for election let us be fair now uh, if the mafia is funding it black money is funding it big corporates are funding it we have objections state funding is not going to happen in the next few days right. so i have a plea or a you know request to the voters of karnataka let each one of us give a small amount of money to our favorite party and favorite candidate and let the people of karnataka fund the elections and this, then this demand is, accountability and say if you are taking how, black money you are going to go to jail this is how it happens in the united states where you know even ordinary people are funding i am not uh, sure Mr. Like Kumar, like see the, the issue of money power when we talk of money power it was during the time of you you people your your your, your leader who was a chief bjp chief minister who created this wave in the state of you know it, the most expensive election probably was fought in 2008 so you know how do you respond to that? Is you know the kind of money which has been spent by your party in the, in, in those days, is is that has that become the norm now in politics in Karnataka? If, if anybody uh, is spending the largest money uh, amount in these elections, apparently it is the election commission. You know the 200 crores of rupees from the public exchequer is provided for conducting these elections, and we see these days they put a ban on us not to. Uh, put up any publicity material anywhere, but they have exhibited very big uh, hoardings uh, showing the photos of uh, uh, queens, kings, this, that, I don't know. Anyway, uh, the less said is the better. But the point uh, which I am trying to make is, I fully agree with the, Mr. Gowda, we somewhere, uh, uh, we are only uh, either uh, afraid of uh, admitting the fact that uh, Elections are expensive and uh, uh, these kind of, you know, hypothetical figure or uh, 16 lakhs per candidate, I don't know uh, whether uh, one can really, uh, that too, when you have such strong opponents, you know, there must be parity. Strong yeah, opponents. If, if you can. Strong in the sense, money power yes. I am talking. And money that, power I am talking. So, if... So, when we talk of money power, every, can, everybody talks of Yadiyurappa and the money power which he has. You, you, I'm sure you realize that. He spent that. everything, uh, Girish. 
He has nothing today. And uh, you see, today, today, it's very, very difficult. How is I'm he finding telling you, if now? this is parity, if there is parity among all the political parties, I can understand. Uh, really, the government of India, uh, the parliament for that matter, will have to sit, put their heads together, and we should arrive at a uh, reality figure. How much should be spent? And uh, no, I would I, agree with the Shastri when he says, that let us make a new beginning. Okay. Let the water come I th and I think make a contribution. Yes, let, 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 company yes this, is a la, this is a larger the water issue. Water contributes. He will ask you, sir, what are you doing? Anyway, <laughs> no, last words. No, no, we, we are accountable. No sorry, doubt. we are completely running out of time. Last words to you. No, but yes. I think, see, uh, the political parties, I, I think I should blame the Congress for this. The last 10 years they've been in power. You've been talking about electoral reforms. Why is that nothing has been done they to curb to the you know, money power? Nothing has anyway, been done and there is no talk about it. Anyway, this, this, this is an issue which is not just confined to Karnataka, it's an issue yeah. which is a across national country, issue across national the country. Issue. Every election we have been talking right. about it. Hopefully, in the coming days we will see that uh, you know being implemented, the reforms which is a, a long uh, demand which has been there. But anyway, the, the elections to Karnataka, what will happen? We will keep a close watch. We are here regularly watching the and you know visiting the constituencies, talking to people. We'll, give, we'll keep giving you the latest information on the Karnataka elections. Please keep watching. Thanks to all my guests, Dhananjay Kumar, Professor Rajiv Gowda, Professor Trilochan Shastri and Ramkrishna Upadhyaya. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue in the big picture, same time tomorrow.